Hi, welcome to Category 5 video tutorial. I've called this exercise a simple stand. Why simple? Because it's quite easy to do. And why a stand? Because it almost looks like a stand. So, let's have fun with Category 5. First, I want to define some parameters. So go for fx and filter this for the user parameters. I need a new parameter of type length, single value, and that should be the stand length. And I want to go for 200 millimeter. You could use different values if you want, of course. So let's go for apply. Another new parameter of type length and this will be the stand diameter and I want to go for 30 millimeter. Apply. And then another one and this will be the wire diameter and I want to go for 0 0.12 millimeter. Apply. OK, and there you have it. Now, let's define a helix. So go for that helix. But first I need to do that starting point. So go for that starting point. Go for, where is it? A point. I want to go for coordinates. And I want to put it on the y-axis. So this should be a formula. Edit formula. And this should be the stand diameter divided by 2. And confirm. And confirm. Now I can start here with my helix. So let's go for the helix. I could have done it on the fly as well here by right click. Yeah. So the starting point would be this point here. The axis would be this one but I want to go for height and revolution. So the selections are still the same. The height would be, of course, a formula, and that should be the stand length. Confirm. Then that's OK, that's OK. So for the revolutions, I want to go for a formula. So let's go to edit formula. And I want to use the stand length divided by, let's say, 10 millimeter. And don't miss out the units, because that will give you otherwise a warning. And let's confirm. That should be OK. And I want to add a profile to control the shape of the helix later on. So let's confirm this, which gives me gives me that nice helix. Now in order to shape that helix, I need a sketch. So let's go for a sketch on the Y set plane and I want to hide those yellow projected elements. And it doesn't work because my user selection filter is still on. So you always have to take care if you activate that user selection filter that you deactivate it later on. So and that's a difference between the 3D and the sketch environment. Here it was activated and in the 3D it was not activated. So now I can select these and yeah, hide them. And I need that point in my sketch as a construction element. So let's select it and go for projection. And it's right there. And that shape curve has to start right at that point. So you could do different, kind of different kinds of curves. And I want to go for a tangent continuous one. You could use a spline. Or you could even use just a continuous curve. Now, maybe this could look like, let's snap him to that point, yes, not for construction. Maybe it goes like this, then it goes to the inside, 
straight on and then to the outside maybe even wider maybe like this and then back maybe here like that I don't want that perpendicularity then go straight up then up here and then straight on like this now I want to add a dimension so this should be from this end to that axis and this should be edit formula the stand length and confirm and confirm now I want to make fillets on all those vertices so let's activate that user selection filter and I can select them like this and then I can make a fillet on all of them by using that corner tool let's try 15 and see if this will work sometimes it yeah, this looks okay yeah and leave that sketch now we need a circle on the Y set plane so go for another sketch again I want to hide those elements but see it's still on so deactivate it and hide them let's bring in that point again like this should be for construction and then the circle should be put right there and you can't go for a diameter because in a formula you have to use a radius so this should be edit formula that y diameter divided by 2 and confirm and confirm leave that sketch and the helix should be shaped by that curve so let's go to that helix select profile and select that sketch that would be sketch 2 in my case and we got that shaped helix now I can do a rip and I want to switch back to the part design workbench in order to do that so let's go for the rip tool that's just a warning that it will go to the part body that's okay and the profile would be in my case sketch 3 and the center curve would be that helix and I want to go for pulling direction which means that profile that sketch 3 remains normal to that plane here and let's confirm hide that sketch 2 I don't want to have a circular profile so why did I use a circle because if I go for keep angle then that profile would turn around that central curve but I went for pulling direction so that's not the real problem but I want to split here with two surfaces so let's switch back to the wireframe and surface design and I want to use that sketch 2 and make a surface and then an offset surface or two so in this case I want to use revolve I want to revolve with that one here so I could add in that sketch a center line an axis like this so let's go here and I cannot snap because it's hidden but do it like that and add so this should be right there 
coincident and of course that point for example this one should be on the set axis as well and it should have a length and that would be again that stand length so go for edit formula and set this it could be longer it could be short it doesn't really matter so if i go for revolve it will recognize that axis hopefully okay and i want to go for 360 degrees which gives me that revolute and now i need two offset faces and it should be extended so let's go for extension where is it uh, there you go i want to extend this one here by 10 millimeter tangent continuous yes and it should be assembled the result same on the other end here and confirm and now two offset surfaces and the offset should be made by a formula and that would be the y diameter divided by four for example that would be okay so let's go for an offset there you go select that surface here and i want to go for both sides if you don't have that option you have to do it in two steps so that should be a formula edit formula and i want to go for a quarter of that wire diameter let's divide this one by four and confirm and i want to go for both sides and okay which gives me those two offset surfaces now i want to give them a name so i could see which one is which so let's zoom in there should be three surfaces one and the second one so this seems to be the inner one and that seems to be the outer one so let's rename this one and call this the outer one so it's outer surface and the other one the inner surface inner okay now let's split that part body i want to split that rib So split and the, oh, that's yeah I have to switch back to the part design workbench of course and then I have to go for that split yes and the splitting element the outer one so the arrows should go to the inside because in kit it's like this the arrow points in that direction where the material will be kept so no extrapolation let's confirm this and if i done it correct i should be able to use the inner one now the inner one and that has to point in that direction that would be okay and confirm so hopefully there's still a body let's hide the geometrical set yeah and the profile should be looking now a little bit different that will not be visible here because you have, would have to change oh it's visible see so here it's straight straight and there's that curvature from that circle this looks good this looks good so let's 
to the mirror and the circular pattern. Okay, let's mirror that body here. So go for the mirror and I want to mirror the current solid and the mirroring element would be that plane. And let's confirm this. Yeah, that's okay. No error message, no warning. That's great. And now we can do a circular pattern. So let's go to a circular pattern. I want to pattern the current solid. That's okay. I want to have a complete crown. Let's go for four instances. And the reference would be the set plane. So this might take a while. So I may have to stop the recording and then start it again when it's finished. Let's see. Let's go for OK. Sometimes it works and calculates faster than expected. Yeah, and this looks really nice. And if you change the amount of instances to maybe 16, you will get a finer mesh. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, please give it a like or leave a comment. If you want to see more, please give it a like or leave a comment. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would really help. And you could also watch my new KTV5 training on the LinkedIn learning platform because you will get anyone gets a free trial month and you could watch a lot of videos there. So thanks for watching. See you to the next one. Bye bye.